Hello, I'm Victoria Reynoldson, communication and culture coach, and welcome to today's Wednesday Words, where we'll be talking about priming for confidence. When you have an important communication or presentation, I'm sure that you prepare, but have you thought about how you actually prime yourself for confidence? What do I mean by this? Actually building up your confidence before the event itself. And you can do this emotionally, physically and mentally. And I'm gonna share with you today some of those ideas for the days or weeks before the event itself, and then what you can do in the minutes before the event. So let's make a start. What can you do in the days and weeks before the event comes up? So first of all, I want you to think about the prep itself. Now I'm sure you're thinking about what it is you want to say, but are you practicing? When I recommend uh, to my clients to build up their confidence, I often say to them, think about practicing in front of a mirror or maybe open up a Zoom or a Teams meeting and just hit the record button so you can see not only what you're saying, but how you sound and how you're coming across with your body language, your gestures, your facial expressions and making sure even important things like you're smiling. So that's quite important. If you do record it, do make sure that you listen back and focus on what's positive first. So make sure you don't just jump into crit criticizing yourself and doing yourself down. You want to focus on what's positive first before then you think about how you could improve and develop. And if you're going to focus on any particular part of what you're communicating, always think about what you're saying at the beginning and at the end. These are the critical points where you want to be really impactful and these are the moments that the audience will remember best. So that's about preparation. Also, you can think about the questions that might come up. You can gain a lot of confidence from anticipating those questions and knowing how would you answer them in the moment. So another top tip. Personally, I like to think about how I'm gonna repair, particularly in the virtual uh, event space, my, my full space. So I think about the background. What is it going to look like? If you don't have particularly appropriate backgrounds, of course, there's a wealth of virtual backgrounds where you can just blur it. But do think about important aspects like lighting. Is the space bright enough? Will people be able to see you clearly? What you're saying, how you look, and, and also have you got the right sound equipment so that you sound clear as well? Another tip on this is that I like to think about my other senses as well. So sometimes I like to have a coffee just before an event, give me energy. Other times I like to use aromatherapy. So I have a bit of peppermint oil just here on the side and this energizes me and focuses my attention. And this can give me confidence as well. So when you're delivering events virtually, do you think about that full um, experience for you and your audience and how you can make it best for you. The final point in terms of preparation is I like to think about what does success look like for me and visualize it. So I might write down uh, some sentences about what would it be like if I was successful? And I write those in the present tense. So I might write something like, I can see myself standing strong and confident. I can see the audience listening carefully to me. I can see them looking really positive and enjoying my messages and communication. This is a great way to visualize what does success look like for you? So do personalize it to your own situation. And the important thing is to write it in the present tense to uh, write it down, that is one option, but you can also voice record them. I sometimes do this and then listen back to them. And this gives me a sense of confidence as I prepare for particularly bigger events and uh, more significant uh, communication presentations, for example. So that's what you can do in the days and weeks before the event itself. What about just before uh, you either go live for a virtual event or you actually go on the stage or you're kind of presenting or communicating in front of the audience? Well, here are some tips for you. I personally believe in standing. I think it's the best way to get confidence because you're standing up straight. 
you are your breath can flow more easily through your body so your voice sounds more steady um and that works for me personally i stand you can't see me right now but i'm standing uh with my feet flat on the floor and i'm being very careful to kind of feel very um central and grounded it allows my breath to flow through my body and that gives me a sense of strength and confidence so if you choose to stand, whether virtually or in real life, do make sure you're doing this by standing up straight rather than maybe slouching to one side or crossing your legs. It's really important to um, make sure your body is straight. If you prefer to sit, that's of course not a problem, but make sure you're sitting up nice and straight. And again, that's gonna make you feel more confident, more strong and allow the breath to flow more freely. Some people love to do what's called the power stance, which is a particular physical movement uh, before you go live or perhaps in private, uh, just before you, you kind of go and do your communication or presentation. And what this is, is, again, is standing up. You put your hands on your hips and put your chest out and you're taking just a few deep breaths. It's almost like you're standing like you're a superman or a superwoman. And this can give you a really good sense of confidence, a strong sense of confidence. Um, so do experiment and work out what, what kind of works for you physically. If I'm going to a live event and I'm delivering in front of an audience, I always like to uh, turn up early and I like to work out where I'm gonna stand or sit. And I physically try out the space because I want to make sure that I'm in the place that I feel most confident and that I feel connects with the audience. Clearly, it goes without saying, if you're doing a live event, do make sure the technology is working as well. Um, well, actually, that's true for a virtual event as well. Um, but particularly with, with it, real life events, you want to make sure you're in the place that is most confident for you, whether that's standing, sitting, to the side of the stage, central stage, and you can work out where that is in anticipation before the, everybody arrives. Um, we've talked about breath, we've talked about standing. And um, finally, one final, final tip for you. If you are somebody who is still building up their confidence and you feel that um, this doesn't come naturally to you, then I give you one more tip, which I use particularly when I was on my confidence journey and I was having to present in front of large audiences and didn't feel it as yet. So I would act as if, and that means that I would pretend, I would act as if I were a really confident presenter. And although at first that didn't always happen 100% of the time, I noticed if I worked on this and I used this idea um, time and time again, eventually I became that confident presenter. I didn't have to keep on acting. So that might be an, a concept, an idea that might help you as well. So there you go, two parts for preparation and priming for confidence. What you do in the days and weeks before the event itself and what you do in the moments and minutes before you either go live or you actually uh, deliver your communication in front of other people. I do hope this has been valuable for you. And if you are somebody who is watching um, this via video on YouTube, do make sure you subscribe to my channel to make sure you always get the alerts when I'm going, uh, when I'm uploading the next video for this. If you are listening to this as an audio or perhaps even reading it via the blog, um, and that's on my website, do make sure that also you're subscribing and signing up so you get the automatic emails that let you know when the next Wednesday words are going live. Um, clearly, if you're somebody who is on this confidence journey and this is something that is perhaps a little challenging for you or you have a particular important event coming up that you need some preparation for, then please do get in touch with me. I would love to chat to you and see how I can help and perhaps tell you more about my nine steps to communication confidence, my individual coaching program for people who really want to make the difference in their communication confidence. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Victoria Reynoldson, communication and culture coach, and I look forward to seeing you next time on Wednesday Words.